Hello and welcome. What you are about to hear is an excerpt from an oral history interview collected by the Octavia Fellum Public Library as part of its Our Stories, Our Community project. The full interview this excerpt is taken from is available on CD at the Octavia Fellum Public Library main branch. I'm Marcos Chavez, age 35. Today's date is January 31st, 2014, and we're in Gallup. My name is Sam Sosi, age 36. Today's date is January 31st, 2014. We're in Gallup, New Mexico. So, Sam, um, where are you from originally, and can you tell us a little bit about where you come from? Uh, I'm originally from uh, Southern California. Um, I was born in Quantico, Virginia. Uh, My dad was a Marine, so we traveled a lot. We ended up in Camp Pendleton, which is about half hour north of San Diego on the 5 Freeway. I spent a good part of my youth on Camp Pendleton uh, up until 1989 and moved uh, further inland uh, to Riverside County to a community called Marietta, California, where I graduated from high school and went to college um, in Southern California at Cal State University, San Marcos. Um, up until then, uh, I wasn't really aware of um, my my culture. Uh, my mom is from El Salvador. She was born and raised in San Salvador. And my dad is uh, Navajo. He's full-blooded Navajo from the Dilcon area, which is on the western edge of the uh, Navajo Nation in the state of Arizona. Um, so up until then, I was mostly involved with the Latino culture. Growing up in Southern California, there's a huge collective of Salvadoreños, Mexicanos, and other countries are represented in the L.A. area as well as San Diego. And so I was in touch with my my mom's side of her culture, but I was always wondering about my my father's side. We would go visit my grandparents occasionally, maybe once or twice a year. Um, and it wasn't until I was probably uh, probably until maybe 1989 or maybe 1991 or two, that I realized that my grandfather was a Navajo code talker. Um, We had always heard about the Navajo code talkers um, being Navajo, my family. But we really weren't sure what they did. Um, And their role in World War II was kind of shrouded in secrecy up until it was declassified, I believe, at the turn of the century. Um, And um, just to to know that my grandfather was a code talker was pretty amazing. Um, especially there's not too many um, role models for young Navajo men um, and to have someone in your family um, with such leg- leg- legacy in their history um, was pretty impressive um, but my grandfather never said anything about it he was pretty humble um, as a matter of fact after he returned from World War II um, he went to work for IHS and he put in 40 years as a translator um, for IHS out on the Western Agency in Arizona? In Arizona, that's mm-hmm. correct. In the Dilcon Castle Butte area. Um, and they were living in Winslow at the time. I see. So how did you first find out about uh, what your grandfather did? We began to see some memorabilia. My, my father served 20 years in the Marines as well. Mm. He served in Vietnam. Um, he served in Desert Storm, Desert Shield, um, in Granada in the early 80s as well. So there's, o- there's always been that storied legacy of Marines. My uncle served in the Marines. Um, actually, two of my uncles served in the Marines, and the other one served in the Army. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was always that, you know, growing, growing up on a military base, it's, that was always a huge presence. And a part of my life um, and how I came to be as a person today um, kind of shaped my personality, the structure of the military base, and growing up in a military household. But <clears throat> there would always be this memorabilia um, from my grandfather's time in the middle in the Marines, and we just began asking, and he would slowly tell us. My dad was more of the champion of you know letting this information out as opposed to my grandfather, who tried to keep it to himself. Mm-hmm. Like I say he's a pretty humble guy. But the more we would ask, um, the more it would come out. And I find out later in life, um, my grandfather's still alive, um, and before he would be really hesitant to share his stories, but now he's opening up more. Um, and sharing his stories, and initially we wanted him to be here, mm-hmm. um, but he's approaching 90, and he's actually in out of state right now, so it would be very difficult to get him here. Right. Um, so. So, what do you uh, think is the most interesting thing you've found out about uh, your Navajo side? 
the most interesting thing would, would probably be that um, this is a a proud culture um, uh, his, uh, with a lot of history um, and a lot of um, obstacles have been presented to the Navajo culture, and yet we're still here, um, and we're still, I don't want to say thriving, but we're still relevant, and um, we still are holding on to our cultures, our culture. Um, the language is obviously a concern for a lot of Navajos, especially the older ones. Uh, the younger ones don't speak. The Octavia Film Public Library is committed to providing open and wide access to information. Please visit one of our branches in Gallup, New Mexico. The music used in this podcast was Enigmatic by Ben Sound, available at www.bensound.com. Thank you for listening to this oral history. This is John Fortunato for the Octavia Film Public Library.